All right, mates, how's it going? In today's video, chapter 22 of Arthas, Rise of the Lich King. Time for Arthas to get a bit of comeuppance and stuff. So let's get. Arthas was now in his quarters, trying to figure out what the bloody hell was going on. When the crippling pain had struck him, Arthas had witnessed a vision of the being he served, the Lich King. And in this vision, his master was alone in a vast cavern, imprisoned in ice, just as Frostmourne had been. However, his icy prison had been fractured, as if someone had broken a piece off or something. And his voice sounded very much like someone crying out in torment. Danger draws near the frozen throne. Power is fading. Time is running out. Return to Northrend immediately. Obey. Also, with each pain attack, Arthas felt weaker and vulnerable, and that concerned him quite a bit. He'd not felt weak and vulnerable for a while, so he got up and head out to find Kalthazard and have a little chat. The sieges have been getting worse. Yes, with my powers drained, I can barely command my own warriors. The Lich King warned me that if I didn't get to Northrend soon, all could be lost, so we should probably get going. Of course, Your Majesty. You have not and will not be forsaken. We'll leave as soon as you- There's been a change of plans, King Arthas. You're not going anywhere. The fact that Arthas hadn't even sensed the intrusion from the three dreadlords was proof that his powers were indeed weakening. It's a trap! Defend your king! But, Kalthazard's call to action was drowned out by the sound of the main gate slamming shut. Arthas drew Frostmourne, and was a little bit surprised to find that it felt heavy. Not perfectly balanced as all things should be. Undead then rushed towards Arthas, and he had to use every bit of strength he possessed to fight back. Not just because he was weakened, but because he hadn't really been expecting his own peeps to turn on him. We've assumed control over the majority of your warriors. It seems your reign was short-lived, King Arthas. Arthas gritted his teeth and somehow managed to dredge up some more energy, but he was still vastly outnumbered. There are too many of them, my king. Flee! I'll find my own way out and meet you in the wilderness. It's your only chance, my liege. Deep down, Arthas knew the Lich was right, and he was actually kind of moved by Kalthazard's loyalty, so he cried a little bit and then cheesed it. The main gates were closed, but Arthas knew of other ways out of the city. He'd grown up here after all, but as he raced through the corridors of the castle, he couldn't help but be reminded of the life he'd once lived, especially when he ran past the room that he and Jaina had bumped uglies in. But again, he closed his mind against the memories. Distractions would only get him killed. Soon enough, he made his way through one of the many secret passages of the castle and fell out into the dim light of Tirisful Glades. And as he looked up, catching his breath, he was a little bit confused by what he saw. Undead, fighting each other. However, as he observed the battle, it suddenly dawned on him that these undead were all actually a bit gross. Whether they fought for him or against him, they were disgusting. A glimmer then caught his eye, a forlorn little ghost hovering timidly. She was a lot less gross, so he extended his hand out towards her. I have need of your abilities, little shade. Will you help me? I live only to serve you, King Arthas. He wasn't interested in ending this battle outside the city walls. He just wanted to fight his way through so he could carry on cheesing it. But he was weak, so very weak. With every swing of Frostmourne, his arms were growing increasingly weary. And then, things went from bad to worse when the earth trembled and Arthas turned to see no fewer than three abominations running towards him. I'll not go down without a fight, you bastards! Suddenly, anguished cries filled the air, and Arthas stared as spectral figures swooped down from above and seemed to dive right inside the approaching creatures. And then, after a brief pause, the abominations started fighting for Arthas instead of against him. They made quick work of the remaining hostile undead, and then turned on each other and hacked themselves to grisly bits. At which point, the spirits that had possessed them darted free. Banshees. Thank God for Banshees. You have my thanks, my ladies. I'm glad to see that you and your mistress remain loyal. Indeed, great king. She sent us to find you. We've come to escort you across the river to take refuge in the wilderness. Seemed legit. So Arthas lifted a hand and summoned Invincible. Lead me to your mistress and Kelthazard, and I shall follow. And follow he did. The Banshees floated deeper into the heart of Tirisful Glades, and Arthas felt a little bit uneasy when it seemed like they were headed towards the Baunir farm. But fortunately, they veered off, heading into another area instead. This is the place. We'll rest here, Great King. Why here? Where's your mistress? Suddenly, another pain attack struck Arthas, accompanied by another vision of the Lich King. Only this time, the vision contained a warning. You're being deceived, you moron. Come to my side at once. Obey. What the bloody hell is going on? Arthas then blinked to clear the vision, and that's when he saw her, stepping out from behind a tree. It was Sylvanas, except she looked different. No longer the ghostly banshee he'd made her, she'd somehow managed to get her body back. Sylvanas then drew her bow, aimed, and smiled. He walked right into this one, Arthas. And then she fired. The arrow impaled his left shoulder, and it hurt like hell. 
But Arthas couldn't help but wonder why this master archer had aimed for his shoulder. Why not a more fatal shot? But he soon got his answer, because his hands went numb, followed by his feet, and then his legs. Traitor! What have you done to me? It's a special poisoned arrow I made just for you. The paralysis you're experiencing now is but a fraction of the agony you've caused me. Finish me then. A quick death, like the one you gave me. Nah, you've taught me well, Arthas Menethil. You taught me about the folly of showing mercy to my enemies, and the delight of tormenting them. And so, my tutor, I'll show you how well I've learned these lessons. You're going to suffer how I did, and thanks to my arrow, you can't even run. Ah, oh, shitballs. Arthas could now only move his eyes, and so he watched, helplessly, as Sylvanas lifted her dagger. Give my regards to hell, you son of a bitch. You shall not fall today, my king! Kel'Thuzad! He'd come, just as he said he would, just when Arthas needed him most. Arthas was still paralysed, so all he could do was sit and watch. But it soon became obvious that Sylvanas was going to have to retreat. This isn't over, Arthas. I'll never stop hunting you! And then she was gone. Did she harm you, my liege? Arthas was still paralysed, so he couldn't answer. And Kel'Thuzad then yanked the arrow out of his shoulder and examined the gooey black substance coating it. The effects of her arrow will wear off in time. Seems the poison was only meant to immobilise you. That made sense. Otherwise, why would she have needed a dagger? But it was still a relief to hear that everything was going to be alright. Arthas then tried to speak again and managed to squeeze some words out. You saved me. You're welcome, mate. But you need to get to Northrend. All the preparations for your journey have been made. What do you need me to do? I don't know what the future holds or if I'll return, but I want you to watch over this land. See to it that my legacy endures. You honour me, my leech. I shall do as you ask, King Arthas. Several days later, Sylvanus was a little bit pissed off. You seem troubled, mistress. Aren't you, sister? Only days ago we were the Lich King's slaves, and now we are free. I don't understand. Is that not what you fought for? I thought you'd be overjoyed. What joy is there in this curse? We're still undead. What are we if not slaves to this torment? Sylvanus was still annoyed that her vengeance had been taken from her, and now Arthas was far beyond her grasp. The only good thing about it was that, being dead, she had all the time in the world to come up with another exquisite revenge plot. A movement then caught her eye, so she drew a bow. It was a portal opening, and Varimathras, one of the Dreadlords, then stepped through it. Greetings, Lady Sylvanus. My brothers and I appreciate the role you played in overthrowing Arthas. Overthrow? I suppose you could call it that. I've come to offer you a formal invitation to join our new order. New order? Nothing new about it. Same subjugation, different master. My only interest was in seeing Arthas dead. I failed in my first attempt at this goal, so I'll be concentrating my efforts on succeeding the next time. I have no time for your petty politics or power-mongering. Careful, my lady. It would be unwise to incur our wrath. We are the future of these plague lands. You? The future? Kalthazard was left here for a reason. You really think you can win against a lich reborn by the very essence of the Sunwell itself? I've lived as a slave long enough, Dreadlord. I have my own will now. I won't relinquish my freedom by shackling myself to you pathetic fools. So be it. Our reply will come soon. And then he was gone. Although he did manage to shoot Sylvanus a bit of stink eye before teleporting away. He'd been easy to anger. Interesting. Maybe she could use that. Sylvanus then returned her thoughts to the only thing that really mattered. To defeat Arthas, she was going to need more than a handful of banshees. She was going to need an army. She even had a name in mind for them. The Forsaken. And she had an idea of where to go to build this army. Lordaeron. She and the Forsaken would find their own path in this world, and slaughter any jerk that stood in their way. And we're leaving it there! Unfortunately, that's it for the Sylvanas stuff in this story. The remaining two chapters are back in Northrend, and involve Arthas' fight to Icecrown, with his good pal Anubarak. So that'll be fun. As usual, link in the description if you're interested in buying this book. Also, there's links to my Discord server and my Patreon page too. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all there's left to say is, Thanks for watching, and see ya!